If you are a fountain pen lover, collector, or if you like fountain pens, nibs, and anything and everything in between, you're gonna love this video. As always, welcome back to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host Aaron from Penventure. Welcome to another fountain pen review. And in this one, we are tackling one of the most epic and rarest sailor nibs ever, the King Cobra. Usually my content is quite serious, but we need to sprinkle a little bit of fun and jokes here and there. And I hope you like that intro. Ladies and gentlemen, I am super happy to have you back on the Pendentia YouTube channel. We are gonna have a very, very interesting fountain pen review. And for this review, we need to say a big thank you to Thomas from Germany, who is a friend of the channel. And he sent me this fountain pen in order to share the experience of reviewing it on the channel with you all. In this video, we are gonna review the Sailor 1911 Large Maki A Butterfly Fountain Pen. We're gonna focus on both the nib and the artwork because as a platform, the fountain pen is quite similar to your everyday 1911 Large. Sailor, it's one of the most interesting pen companies from Japan that I collect, I adore, I like, and I use as a writing platform in my day-to-day -day rotation. So it's not gonna be a biased review because I do have some things that I will share with you that I would like to have differently in regards to this specific fountain pen. But anyway, you're gonna have a very, very comprehensive understanding of this fountain pen, the nib that comes on this fountain pen, the story behind the nib, and the story behind uh, the, the, the legend, Mr. Nobuyashi Nagahara Sr., nib designer of Sailor, which sadly is not longer with us. As a model, the 1911 series consists of a fountain pen, which is classical, it's torpedo, or what we use today as a term to describe this fountain pen, cigar shaped, is elongated towards both ends. This is something which is very, very synonymous with vintage fountain pens. It's something that we attribute most of the Mont Blanc fountain pens with the presidential 149. It's a cigar fountain pen. The 1911 series is composed of three different sizes. What we have here is the L, which is large. We have a bump down in regards of sizes. It's 1911 standard, not small. And and a bump up from this size, it's the 1911 King of Pan or King of Pans, I don't know. Uh, but I will try to use what I have done as a research on the internet, what I found. So I'm gonna share this with you all. Take everything that you see in my reviews with a grain of salt. Do your own research. If you find something that I've missed, please use the comment section down below. Add that information there and let's help each other out. Let's go through some of the details of this impressive 1911 large. And we start with the finial, which is dome shaped. And just like I told you, this is a cigar shaped fountain pen. So we have very, very round edges on the end finial and also on the cap finial. Then we have this ring right here, which divides the finial from the barrel of the fountain pen, the clip. This is standard to most of the Sailor fountain pens. It's a clip which is quite, quite rigid and very, very practical. So it's not hinged, nothing whatsoever. It's gonna keep your pen really, really secure. And the cap shape starts to pick up in girth from this point, starting to get a little bit wider until this point at the cap band. Cap material and also the body of the fountain pen is made out of resin, this black, very, very shiny and very, very opaque resin. This is something which works very well with gold. Is gold color trims and Makie Urushi, which is composed of this very nice butterflies. And these butterflies are both on the cap and also on the pen body. And they are so graceful. They, uh, some of them move down, some of them look up, going up from the barrel and uh, everything is very, very nice on this fountain pen. And actually, if you think about it, if you have something done in Makie and it's super, super crowded, you need to watch every single detail on that Makie paint and you wouldn't observe most of the details. But I love on this fountain pen that the Makie, it's quite simple. For example, take a look at this butterfly on the cap. It's just one butterfly. It's made with gold dust. If we spin the fountain pen, we can clearly see that we have some complementary uh, swooping designs right here done with Makie as well because it's not 
that cohesive to leave blank as a black resin. So they use these designs to cover some of the parts that don't have this macchie. And if you are not accustomed by now with Urushi, Urushi is a art form and it's composed of having the sap of the lacquer tree being extracted, being mixed up with all sorts of pigments, metal powders and everything. And it is painted by hand on certain precious items. This gives out a very, very three-dimensional look towards the fountain pen and everything is done by hand. On the wings, we have some inserts right here, those two dots, abalone shell, because it is is reflecting and it has this pinkish greenish hue right here we have the kappa band configuration it is one that is used with all sailor fountain pens 1911s at least and let's untwist the cap we have one and almost two complete turns of the cap to uncap the fountain pen this is a little bit too much if you are looking forward at getting notes and quickly uncapping the fountain pen and putting it back together let's take a quick look at the nib because this is jaw dropping if you know fountain pens, I think you at least seen online once or twice the famous Sailor stacked nibs. In regards of stacked nibs, one of the most rarest nibs that you can get on a Sailor, it's either the King Eagle, which is done on the King of Pants, or the King Cobra, which is done in this configuration right here. I still vividly remember the last time that I seen online one of these nibs, and it was like four or uh, three or four years ago on uh, Instagram. And uh, I even popped a question if that nib is available to be sold, and the person uh, put a big smile in two <laughs> of those, uh, ha ha ha. It's one of those nibs that is very legendary, and I'm gonna tell you the story behind, because it's such a very intricate story with uh, so many things that you need to understand regarding these nibs. These nibs were designed by Mr. Nobuyashi Nagahara, and this person was the nib designer of Sailor, senior. Let's mention this because it's no longer with us, sadly. And its son, I believe, it's still working with Sailor at this moment uh, in regards of having specialty nibs. But the most collected ones, the most revered ones, are the ones that we have here in front of us, done by Nobuyashi Nagahara Sr. I did some research and I found the story behind the first ever stacked nib of Sailor and how Mr. Nobuyashi Nagahara came about it. And I have my laptop here, so I'm gonna use some information right here. Nagahara Nobuyashi, senior sailor nib designer who played a large part in popularizing the nag. You will find on the nib right here on the right shoulder, N-A-G from his name, Nagahara, was on a business trip in Tokyo in 1966. According to Moriyama, Nagahara wanted to make a drawing nib for an artist when the idea came to him on one of those Tokyo nights. Seized with inspiration, Nagahara worked throughout the night until the morning. He had completed one of the first cross nibs. I'm going to show you what it means when we say a cross nib. And I have a cross point nib on my Classic Pants LB5. It's a giant 21 karat gold nib, which has stacked on top of it a nib which is similar size and the tipping it's shaped like a egg like an oval and this nib writes very very impressive and there is a video review for this fountain pen if you want to see it much more closer and in detail i'm gonna leave it up here you can click on it but at the end of the video and let's continue with our story that day nagahara called moriyama a legendary nib worker at his own right writes on his blog his encounter with the cross nib and its lasting impact on his relationship with fountain pens. It had opened up the world of fountain pens even further for him and he calls the cross nib the ultimate expression in broad nibs. And what we have here, it's a 1911 nib which is stacked and the name King Cobra comes from the actual way that the cobra sits when it's angry. It's 
puffing its neck and right here we can clearly see the sort of diamond uh, neck of the nib and we have this lower stacked under the the one that is the actual normal nib of the fountain pen right here we can clearly spot that the overall tipping is just like a triangle the lower part is much more larger and right there on the tipping we have a smaller nib size which acts like a point so it's a triangle this tells me that the nib will write very fine at the 90 degrees and as you slant the angle downwards you will actually have a very very thicker line but you will see this in the writing sample in a few moments this is one of the most rarest nibs that you can find on sailor fountain pen because mr senior Nobuyashi Nagahara is no longer with us so no one is making this nib so this is why they are very collected very sought after and very very expensive if you find them available and we have this elegant 1911 marking right here the anchor logo 21 carat at at the bottom of the nib sailor let's move further and we have right here on the section a metal ring which marks the beginning of the section the section is very simple it starts to go down in diameter around right here it's the most thinnest point as you grip the fountain pen we have no flaring out towards the nib so my fingers don't usually slip forward towards the nib but i would have loved to have something there the capping threads of the capping system right here and those are very well polished right here we have another part and then we have a very small step up and the barrel of the fountain pen starts from the thickest point right here and it's gonna go down in diameter around this point right here on the barrel another beautiful beautiful interpretation of the actual theme of this fountain pen butterflies and we have a larger butterfly uh, very nice abalone uh, inserts on the wings we have this 3d elements uh, all over the fountain pen uh, on the butterflies we have a smaller butterfly right here and it's different the wings are actually made i believe with copper particles like i told you on the other black surfaces which are left blank we have this swooping design like a line and i believe it's sort of the, the the interpretation of the wind blowing and the butterflies flying this ring marks the finishing of the barrel then we have the phenol right here pointy just like the cap but at a different angle it is more elongated quickly check the filling system of the fountain pan as expected with the 1911 we have the proprietary sailor cartridge converter and this is plug in you can actually use the fountain pan with sailor cartridges or with this and you need to have a bottle of ink so pretty much this sums up the details of the 1911 large butterfly maki fountain pen this was introduced around 2013 so it's a very well taken care of fountain pen let's talk about the pricing if you want to have a blank 1911 normal resin fountain pen your price point would be around 350 400 euros when this fountain pen was introduced i believe the pricing was close to 500 euros which is not a lot but this is only with the normal nib extra fine fine medium broad uh, those kind of sizes if we put the nagahara king cobra nib i believe that would be a lot more and uh, in my opinion thomas the owner of the fountain pen it's a very very lucky pen collector let's put the fountain pen side by side some of its siblings let's showcase the sizes of the 1911 series dimensions proportions since in the 1911 series we have two sizes one up one down i'm gonna put the 1911 large in the middle and right here we have side by side a 1911 standard and one bump up in size we have the 1911 king of pants in between the 1911 standard and the 1911 large there isn't a huge huge difference when the fountain band is uncapped but if we put the king of pan side by side the large one it's a huge difference capped like this the fountain band measures 141 millimeters in between ends uncapped like this in writing position is measuring 122 millimeters posted although i don't recommend you posting any makie fountain band or urushi fountain band is going to measure 150 
four millimeters, the total weight of the fountain pen uncapped in writing position like so, it's 13 grams. Capped or posted, the total weight of the fountain pen is 21 grams. Now it's time to let that king cobra stacked nib shine. Remember this fountain pen is not for sale. And let's start with this. And we have the pen. Oh my God. Oh my God. Sailor 1911 large Maki A Butterfly. Look at that line. This is triple or quadruple broad ink. Tatcha. Aka. Red. This is the 21 carat um, king. Cobra. Nib. Paper. We are on Tomoy River paper 52 GSM. This is a fun nib. I mean, you wouldn't want to use this nib for daily writing. I don't know what you do. I don't know what's your job description, title, you name it. If you take this at the office and try to use it on normal paper, you're gonna be in trouble. And just for reference, I have here some normal paper. Look at that line. So this is not on my river paper, but if we lay plenty of ink, oh my God, it's, it's coming out on the other turn of the paper. And uh, let's check out the wetness of this nib. And we have one test. <laughs> I mean, this is, this, is just, this is an overkill in my experience. This is a double pass. And whoo -hoo, it's, it's, it's a gusher. You would burn through this cartridge converter of ink in a matter of few minutes, if you believe me. And we have some normal figure of eight. And this nib writes like a double broad around there. And flex, uh, no, we're not gonna flex this nib because this fountain pen, it's not mine, it's on loan and I need to be respectful for the opportunity to Thomas. So this is something that you wouldn't want to flex at all. Please, if you have something like this, don't flex it. I'm gonna pay you not to flex this nib. And uh, let's, let's showcase the, the, the actual characteristics of this sort of a nib. And I'm gonna write at a 90 degree angle and I'm gonna move gradually lower and you can clearly see how the line starts to pick up in size. So you have here like a normal broad and right here you have a triple or even quadruple broad and it's very, very tasteful. It's very wet, very, very smooth and it, it's, it's, it's impressive. The quick brown fox jumps, that's a U, over the lazy dog. This thing is a beauty. It's a very, very wet nib. Uh, if you have a smaller handwriting, this is not for you. If you like uh, feedbacky nibs and dry nibs, this is not for you. Uh, if you uh, have a budget, this is not for you because it's gonna cost an arm and a leg and uh, pretty much from the neck down, everything it will cost you because it's that rare. Uh, it's uh, very, very smooth. I would put it at a solid Hmm, let's see, 9.5 out of 10, 10 being the smoothest nib that I've tried. And I know that I say this for a number of times. Let me tell you that one of the smoothest nibs in my experience is the 23 karat palladium double broad nib from Visconti. That is the 10 out of 10 in my experience. And in regards to feedback, I would put it at around uh, very, very minute. I mean, there isn't any feedback at all. Top marks on that as well. It's super, super smooth. 
in regards of ink flow, I would put a 9.8 out of 10. It's still practical, but mm, under what conditions? I mean, you have to have a Tomoe River paper, you have to have uh, time, you have to have space, you have to have pretty much the whole environment ready for experiencing this nib. This is not something that you would have pulled off from your bag and get some notes. No, this is something that you would have get tremendous amount of pleasures from using this nib. So at the end of the day, enjoying this nib in your uh, journal, taking advantage of some beautiful ink colors. If you want to put plenty of that ink around, you have to have a specific type of paper. Like in this case, we are using a Tomoe River Notebook A5 from Japan, 52 GSM. So it's a very good fountain pen friendly paper. Anyway, uh, in regards of the nib and the handwriting experience, pretty much that's kind of it. Now let's conclude everything in some personal opinions. I don't know where to start. Actually, it, it's, it's a very, very tough opinion in my uh, perspective to say so because this is one of those nibs that are super, super epic. And uh, this is one of those nibs that is just like this. You either like it a lot or you don't at all. In my opinion, I really, really like this nib because this it's not your everyday writer. Like for example, I do have my Classic Pen LB5 with that cross point nib. That is a nib that is very impractical in day-to-day -day writing. So this is why I'm not using it as often as pretty much everything else in my collection. Uh, I would go from extra fine to broad number of times, but from broad to something as wild as something stacked that has triple, quadruple, four times the broad point, I wouldn't say that is super practical. And for me, practicality and combined with the everyday uh, usage of every single fountain pen in my collection, I would have stayed away if I would have this nib on this fountain pen from using this specific fountain pen. Uh, the fountain pen platform for me, it's a little bit shorter. I like the, the, the King of Pen model, this size, but this is just personal opinion. Um, I would have loved to see this nib, like I told you in the video, uh, based on something King of Pen-ish or with a 21 karat gold larger nib versus the 21 karat smaller nib from Sailor. Usually the 1911 fountain pens that I've used, I deem to find them usable when they are posted. But the fact that this fountain pen is made uh, using Makie and Rushi, I wouldn't use it posted. So this is why, for example, uh, in normal conditions, a fountain pen like this for me would be feeling a little bit shorter. The ink, quantity or volume, it's very, very short. I can judge by how wet this nib is riding. And if you play with it, you're gonna go through this entire cartridge converter, which is rather small of ink very, very quickly. And yeah, the pricing. The pricing is the biggest elephant in the room, if we can call it like this. It's very hard for me to price this fountain pen with this nib because I don't know, it is valued to how much you want it in your collection. So I imagine it can fetch up in the number of thousands of euros right now. I don't know if we can call fountain pens a good investment or at least an investment. You invest your money right now to actually exit the investment later with a profit. When it comes to this fountain pens, it's sort of a good investment to say so because it's super, super rare, but they're not available anymore. I've seen like three or four for the past six years. So mm, I cannot judge how many they are. There are not too many. That pretty much sums up this experience, which is delightful. And I'm super grateful and thankful to Thomas for allowing me the privilege to experience this fountain pen in person. Let me know if you have any other questions regarding this specific pen, this specific nib. Let me know if you own such a nib, a stacked nib. If you want to sell it, trade it, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's see how many of this are in our fountain pen community, in the community of people that are watching the PenVenture YouTube channel. Thank you very much for staying that long with me on the PenVenture YouTube channel, reviewing the 1911 large Makie butterfly fountain pen equipped with the King Cobra nib. If you scroll down, you'll find the details for our website, our social media accounts, my phone number, email, anything and everything that you may need in order to get in contact with me. If you are looking for your next writing instrument, pick PenVenture. If you enjoy my content, 
let me know and give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm and everything. And if you want to continue the growth of the Penventure YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe. You can click there, turn the notification bell on, and you will be notified whenever we have cool content like this one. If you want to continue watching my previous videos, I'm gonna leave you this right here. You can click and enjoy. As always, I'm your host, Amy from Penventure. I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe, stay strong. Bye-bye.